On Monday, she arrived at the school. It was very different from the one on Prince Edward Island. Hi, I'm Patsy Dingwell, the author of Broken Crayons. I heard the story quite a while ago, and I just knew it was the story that needed to be shared. Jambo, Kenya, here I come. When I'd go to visit the twin schools on PEI, and I'd deliver letters, but that was my favorite story to always tell. When I saw their reaction, I just knew this needs to be a book, as well as encouragement from Hugh MacDonald, author and po former po poet laureate, who told me this has to be written down. So it took a little while, but it's now a book, and I'm so excited. It was a holy moly moment. <laughs> it was so exciting. I, I hadn't realized, although I had seen the illustrations and the PDFs online, to actually hold the book itself and see my name as the author, it was very exciting. About 800 students from grades primary to eight were waiting to get their first look at the Masungu, or white person. They were as curious about her as she was about them. My name is Ellen Gillis and I'm, uh, I went to Kenya in 2005 for a, a six-week practicum and I currently teach at Stone Park Intermediate. She looked at the small rickety wooden desks with three students sitting at each one. She looked at the clay floors and saw many bare toes wiggling in the dust. It's just one of those stories I tried to share with as many people as I could after I got back and I'm just so excited that it can be shared to a wider audience for forever. The story just really exemplifies the spirit of the Kenyan people and um, the empathy and kindness that exists in that, in, in that part of the world and also exists here. Um, I think it shows uh, just how kind people can be and how we can learn from each other. She reached into her gift bag and pulled out crayons, small boxes of eight bright colors, one whole box for each student. As she passed them out, the room became charged with excitement. It was uh, one of those experiences that uh, really kind of stuck, with, stuck in my heart for a very long time, and to have her retell it in her own way was really something else. Wait, said Miss Gillis. Check the floor around your desk. What was it like watching Patsy reading this story today? It was really nice. I had my young son Gus with me and uh, it was really nice. We were talking about this morning, last night before bed and, and just uh, having this book and, uh, and uh, having this book in print to share for generations and generations is going to be a treasure for sure. And I'm very thankful and grateful to Patsy and Farmers Helping Farmers for making it a reality. And getting the name Farmers Helping Farmers out there, we are really making a big difference at the Kenyan schools. When you think of the cookhouses, the water tanks, the gardeners, the kitchen gardens, like how often do you really get a chance to make such a big difference? So I'm glad people can hear it in a joyful way that we are able and very capable of making a difference. Then she saw it, and she heard it. Crack, crack, crack. Children at the back of the room were very deliberately breaking their new crayons into three pieces. And it's just such a joyous uh, story. And when I think of my experience at the Kenyan schools, it is all about sharing and being happy, but mostly from the Kenyan students. And eventually you will hopefully get to Kenya with a book? Oh, absolutely. It'll be my dream. If we can just get rid of COVID, I'll be there the first chance I get. Miss Gillis smiled. I came to Kenya to teach, she thought, but I think I'm the one who has much to learn.
I hope it just reaches a wider audience and that uh, both kids uh, in schools here as well in Kenya can, can appreciate the story for what it is and, and learn that empathy and kindness really is uh, transparent across all borders. Her very favorite story to tell was about her wonderful students and their broken crayons. Yeah.